Good day and welcome to our province start one course. So the contents. So we're going through conditional probability, the multiplication law of probability and independent events. I'm going to kind of know a student of mathematics today. Alright, so let's quickly start. So conditional probability. If A and B are any two events defined on the same sample space, S, the conditional probability of A given B is defined as, so probability of A given B is this relation that we have here. So quickly, so probability of A given B is written as the probability of A and B. The intersection that stands for n all the probability of b and we say probability of b should always be greater than zero because when probability of b is equal to zero remember probability of a given b we cause probability of a intersection b all over zero and this will make this undefined since it's division by what zero all right so that's when we give this condition that it should be always greater than zero so note if this is equal to zero then as we just discussed so there is a question the question says in a certain community 36 percent of the families own a dog 22 percent of the families that own a dog also own a cat and a 30 percent of the families own a cat a family is selected as random you're supposed to compute the probability that the family owns both a cat and a dog. The second question, you are supposed to compute the probability that the family owns a dog, given it that it owns a cat. So let's take the question very carefully. We are coming to form some data from it. All right. So let's solve it. So the solution to our problem. All right. So, you know, 36% of the families own a dog. So that means probability of those who own a dog will be 36%. You know, 36% is the same as 36 over 100. And this gives us 0 0.36. So that means 0 0.36, they own a dog. And the second part was, let's go there. 22% of the families that own a dog also own a cat. So this one means the probability that um, a family owns a cat given that it owns a dog is 22 percent. Do you see how the question was framed? So um, Probability that You own a cat given you own a dog is um, I mean like you have a cat given you own a dog. So it is um, 22 percent, right? Which is 22 over 100 Which is equal to 0 0.22 and the last part was that 30% um, of the families own a cat, as we can see here. So 30% of the families own a cat. So that means probability of family own, own a cat is 30%, which is the same as 30 over 100, which is 0 0.3. So we have these three useful information which are going to help us to solve our problem. Alright, so the first part of the question was like we should um, we should compute the probability that the family owns both a cat and a dog. Alright, so let's get to work. So we remember that probability of owning a cat, given that you own a dog, is given as probability of owning both a cat and a dog. All about probability of what d. I hope you remember this formula somewhere. We just stated it. That's the law for the conditional probability, the formula. So we are supposed to find for this. This is our unknown. So that's what you are supposed to find for. So you realize that the probability that you own a cat and a dog will be equal to the probability that you own a cat given you own a dog times the probability of you owning what? A dog. And we know this was given as 0.22. We calculated that. And this was given as 36% so to 0.36. And um, when we do this computation, we end up with 0.0792. So I hope you get it. Very simple. All right. The second part of the question says that 
computer probability that a family owns a dog given that it owns a cat. So probability that the family owns a dog given that it owns a cat. It's given a probability that it owns a dog and a cat. Or probably it owns a cat. See, all this is from the formula for the conditional probability. So note that um probability of C intersection D when our um event is independent it's given a probability of C sine probability of D. And you know multiplication is commutative, so that means that this here is the same as probability of D intersection C. Since this is the same as probability of D times probability of C. So that means this year is the same as this year. So we are going to get 0 0.0792 all our probability of T, which was um, 0 0.3 from the question. So this will give us 0 0.264. So that's the solution to the problem. I hope you got it. Yeah. So as you can see, this is the solution that we just found. So let's go to some axioms. So it is interesting to note that the condition probability A given B satisfy the axioms for a probability set function when a probability of B is greater than zero. So in particular, we have these three axioms here. So we say our probability of A given B is always greater than or equal to zero. And this is because we can never have a negative probability. Probability lies within 0 to 1. So it is always greater than 0. And we said probability of B given B is 1. So let's show why. So we are saying probability of B given B is 1. We want to show why. So note that um, probability of B given B from the formula for the condition probability will be Probability of B intersection B all over probability of what B. But note that probability of B intersection B is the same as probability of B. I and myself, I'm the same as myself. So all this over probability of what B. And this will give us 1. So that's why we say this is equal to 1. Or I hope you get it. So let's go back to our PDF. So you say it's if our events are mutually exclusive, that means their intersection is empty. I hope you get it. So that's what this states. Okay, let's move on. Then we move on to the multiplication law of probability. So it says if we multiply each side of equation 2, that's the formula for the conditional probability, by P of B, probability of B, we obtain the following multiplication rule, which enables us to calculate the probability that two events will both occur. So if in my experiment the event can occur, then um right. So let's do the derivation here. Right. So remember that from the Cohen probability law or rule, probability of A given B is equal to probability of A and B and probability of well, probability of A. So if you want to find this, that means multiply both sides by what probability of B. We also multiply this side by probability of B. So this is going to cancel this. And in turn, we are going to have probability of A intersection B equal to probability of B times probability of A given B. So that means this is the formula we use when you want to find both A and B occurring. So this is the formula we use, and that's what the multiplication rule states. So that's what we can see here, right? So, yeah. So it says, since the event A intersection B and B intersection A are equivalent, so I told you they are the same. It follows from equation 4 that we can also write. So we just show this one because this is the same as this, right? So in other words, it does not matter which event is referred to as A and which event is referred to as B. So let's take a look at this question here. It says, suppose that we have a basket containing 20 oranges, of which 5 are spoiled. If 2 oranges are selected at random and removed from the basket in succession without replacing the first, what is the probability that both oranges are spoiled? So, note the data here. We are going to use it to form our data and solve the question. So, um, from the question... 
we have 20 oranges in all so that means our n is 20 and out of those five of them are spots so the number of our spots oranges are five okay so that means the probability of our spots oranges will be five over 20 but the question said we should um if two oranges are selected at random and removed from the basket in succession without replacing the first what is the probability that both oranges are spawned so everything is from the question here what i just said all right so two oranges were removed in succession without replacement what's the probability that they are spawned so you remember that we have four spot five sports oranges here and 20 in all that's the oranges are 20 in all five of them are spawned so with the first one the probability that we remove a sports orange will be five over 20. And with the second one, the probability that we will remove a second orange, which will be spot, will be remember that the oranges were not replaced. So when you take one spot one from the first pick, you'll be left with four, and the total will reduce towards 19. So it will just be 5 over 20, then times 4 over 19, and this gives us let me compute this for you. So it gives us 1 over 19. Alright, so that's it. Very simple. So we can see, um, where is it? So, yeah, 5 over 20 times 4 over 19. So the final answer is 1 over 19 as we had there. So, we are still on the multiplication law of probability. So it says, the multiplication rule can be applied to two or more events. For three events A, B, C, the multiplication rule takes the following. So probability of A intersection, B intersection, C is equal to probability of A times probability of B given A times probability of C given A intersection B. Alright. And we make sure that um, probability of A intersection B is not equal to zero. So that means that the events are independent. But when this is equal to zero, that means they are mutually exclusive. And our probability of A is also non-zero. Right. So it has been proved here by the associative law. So you can go through that. Then the second theorem states that for any two events, A1, A2, up to An, that's N is greater than 2. So our probability of A1, so it is just this one is, this here is the, the main or the general formula for this. And this one is just a general formula for this one so when you use this one it will help you to be able to what prove whatever is here i hope you get it okay so let's move on to the independent events so um in statistics and probability when we say two events are independent or events are independent then what it means is that our probability of a that's when you are taking two events A and B. Then that means our probability of A intersection B is non zero. And as a result, it's given a probability of A times probability of B. Alright. So this is very important, something you have to know. So here it says that two events with non zero probabilities are independent if any of the following is true. So please let's know this. We will prove it. Let's know this. We will show it and let's know this. We also should see this one. I just wrote it. Probability of A intersection B is probability of A times probability of B. So I'm coming to show you why these two holds. Okay. Alright, so we are saying that um the first one was probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. So this is because we know that um Probability of A given B is the same as probability of A intersection B all the probability of what? B from the conditional probability. So we know since our events are independent, then probability of A intersection B is the same as probability of A times probability of what? B all the probability of what? B. So we can see that this cancels out this. And we are left with probability of A. So I hope you can see that here. Alright. 
So let's go to the second one. So the second one says that then probability of B giving A is because probability of B. Can you show that using the same principle we used here? Yeah, I know you can show. So please pause the video and show that. You are done. I'm sure you had that. So remember this is the probability of B giving A will be called probability of B intersection A or probability of B and sorry about probability of a and this is the same as probability of b time probability of a over probability of a this cancels out and we have probability of b so that's just the previous simple one all right so let's continue with our notes so we can see even the proofs here yeah simple ones so it says that we have this question a pair of die is strewn twice. Find the probability of getting totals of 7 and 11. So let's go to the solution here. So it says, let A1, A2, B1, B2 be the respective events that a total of 7 occurs on the first row. A total of, so this is a total of 7 occurring on the first row. A total of 11 occurring on the first row. A total of 7 occurring on the second row and a total of um, 11 occurring on the second row. So we can see them here. So we are interested in the probability of the event A1 intersection B2 union A2 intersection B1. It is clear that all the events are independent. So the fact that independent means that this is non zero and this is also non zero. So moreover, a one intersection and a mutually exclusive event hence so we have this formula here i'm oh, sorry so our probability of a one intersection b2 union so remember that since our events are independent probability of this intersection this will just be this time this that's what we have here and that's of this will be that's of this here Will be what we also have here. I hope you see it. I know that in probability the union or the all stands for plus. So that means you are going to have something like this. But the question is how did you get these values? So let me quickly show you how we got these values and finally how we had one over 54. Okay. Alright, so um we have a fair die that we are tossing it twice. So you see, let's say this our fair die, first fair die here. And it's our second fair die here. So you see, this has this possible sample space. This also has this sample space. So when you like do them together, when you put them together, I mean, you're going to have your one, one here, one, two, this and this will give you one, three. So you're going to get all these, which will give you a sample space of 36. So you realize that the sum of getting seven will be one because one of us, one plus six will give you seven. So we have one here, two here, three here, four here. 5 here and 6. So that means the probability of getting a sum of um, a total of 7 is what? Um, sorry. Which is 6 over 36. And that of getting an 11 is just this and this. So that's just 2 over 36. That's the reason why here you can see we have 6 over 36 times 2 over 36 plus 6 over 36 times 2 over 36 which gives us this 100 and uh, sorry 1 over 54. So that is it with um our content for today so god willing in our next video we'll start off with the total probability rule so thank you very much